Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's Strategy of the Week, Discover the Hidden Power of ETFs. This is Kevin Crow, Manager of Retirement Services, and I'll be your host this evening. In the 35 years I've been in the financial services industry, I've been witness to many changes in products, services, and over that period of time, witnessed the explosion of technology that has allowed the individual investor to have access to more products, more services, and lower commissions. In the past 15 years, there has been a virtual explosion in ETFs, or exchange-traded funds. Initially, the only offerings were for the large indexes. The growth of popularity has been due largely to the various types in which one can invest. But additionally, they have allowed the individual investor to achieve diversification, reduce costs, write covered calls, and simplify their trading, to name a few. Tonight, we'll demonstrate using the many great tools we have with VectorVest and how to create, implement, test, and maintain a simple and effective ETF strategy. Let's begin with the purpose, the process, and the payoff of tonight's Strategy of the Week. First off, what is an ETF? ETFs are a type of investment fund that trade on the stock exchanges. They trade just like stocks, meaning we can buy them, sell them, we can set stops, etc. An investor can place stock type trades in a similar fashion using such techniques as I mentioned, stop losses, covered calls, short sale orders. The benefits of the ETFs is diversification, both by sector, industry, index, commodities, specialties, to name a few. Additionally, we enjoy the benefit of lower expenses. So our purpose this evening will be to create what is called a core satellite ETF strategy. This is simply where we'll use what I call the mothership with some satellite ETFs to enhance returns for the overall portfolio. By doing this, it helps us simplify our equity selection. We do not have to put hours into pouring over annual reports or stock information. These are baskets of stocks that help us get the diversification and liquidity that I mentioned earlier. As a consequence, this helps reduce portfolio maintenance. Although we just can't leave these portfolios alone, we do not have to watch them as closely as we might an individual stock. We also achieve broad diversification, and we can do this through many different facets, but tonight we'll primarily deal with index type ETFs to help us with the diversification. And as I'll demonstrate, we can plan into our back testing some discipline stop losses. Here's the process we'll go through this evening. First off, I'll go to the ETF viewer and select the appropriate ETFs. Then we'll create a watch list. We'll quick test the watch list to assure ourselves that at least we are fishing in fertile waters and that these ETFs have the potential to show us some outstanding returns. Then we'll create a search in VectorVest. We'll back test this search and we'll review results. Here's a schematic of what the core satellite approach would look like. In the middle, we're going to use the S&P 500 ETF. As the name implies, this is 500 of the largest companies trading in the world and provide us with the diversification and safety that we referred to earlier. On either side of the S&P 500, we'll use the S&P Midcap 400 to give us some exposure to growing companies who've established good rates of return and increasing confidence in their financials. To give us a little bit extra kick, we'll use the S&P 600, which is a small cap, and it's from these small cap funds that the next Microsoft, Priceline, and the like will emerge. I wanted to include an international fund, and the Vanguard All World Fund fit that parameter very nicely. And finally, with the planet experiencing an aging population, the healthcare sector might be one also to consider. So here's our payoff if we do our homework and our research well. One, we'll be able to demonstrate this evening's presentation that, that not only is VectorVest an outstanding stock selection program, but you can use it equally as well and use the flexibility of VectorVest to get some very good returns. I'm confident we'll be able to demonstrate consistency in the process that we use. We'll have fewer positions, but we'll have broad asset classes. This allows us to more easily manage our portfolio. And fourth, we're looking for higher returns with less volatility than we may obtain in stocks. Let's begin the process of creating the core satellite portfolio. So we're going to go to our home page. And the first place I'm going to go is to our viewers tab. I'm going to click on viewers and I'm going to go to the ETF viewer. I'm going to click on all and this is showing all of the ETFs in Australia 
that VectorVest follows. But as I mentioned a few moments ago, we are going to look at specific ETFs that give us a very broad covering of various asset classes to reduce volatility and increase returns. As I mentioned, beginning with the ETF viewer, I've changed our date to December the 19th, 2012. And the reason I did this is I wanted to get at least a year of data to look at and be able to backtest with some confidence a reliable return. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to use big cap, highly liquid ETFs for the purposes of this demonstration. So the securities that I have chosen for this demonstration this evening are the iShares S&P mid cap 400, the iShares S&P small cap 600, the iShares S&P 500, the Vanguard all world shares for our international, and the iShares Global Healthcare ETF. I'm demonstrating it this way to you because our next step is to right click, go to add to watch list, left click, and you'll notice I have the five symbols on the left. I also have highlighted our ETF core strategy. That's because I created a watch list for the purposes of this demonstration under the tab my watch list. So I'm going to click OK. We now have our ETF core satellite under my watch list. In the event you're not sure how to create a watch list, you'd go to the major group, click on that, come up here to the icon that looks like a piece of paper, click on that, and then click on new watch list. Type in the name of the watch list. We'll just call it for this purpose is XXX. Click add, and as you can see, I just added the XXX watch list. But I'm going to go back to our ETF core satellite strategy. I'm going to make sure our date is December the 19th, 2012. So I'll make that change in terms of date. Click OK. And now I have the five that we'll use for our demonstration and evaluation. As I mentioned earlier, I want to quick test these particular iShares to make sure they will give us a point-to-point -point measurement of how well these particular ETFs performed. So coming to the top of the list, I'm going to highlight in this case IJH. I'm going to hold down my shift button, go to the bottom iShare, IXJ, left click, and now I've highlighted all five of the ETFs that we're going to quick test. Now because the resolution has been increased for the purposes of this demonstration, this little area over here I'm going to left click and that gives me the opportunity to open up our quick test selection. I'll click on the down arrow and because I've highlighted those five ETFs I will click on quick test selected. As you can see our period of measurement was from the 19th of December to the 6th of February of 2014 sorting by return you can see we had an outstanding performance over that roughly 14 month period 46.89 we had five winners no losers absolutely trounced the VVC Australia and we had broad diversification however as reliable a tool as a quick test is it gives us a point to point comparison we do not know if you would have been comfortable with any of the drawdown that may have occurred between the 19th of December and the 6th of February. So our safest approach is to use the VectorVest backtesting tool to get accurate results. However, in order to do that, our watch list must be in Unisearch. Since we have created the watch list, we'll now click on Unisearch and select New Search. I'm going to come over to our parameters and under the various columns, I'm going to begin by first clicking on Date and Time, click on Time of Search, then under parameter, click on stocks, click on filter by, and remember we're looking for a watch list, and then I'm going to click on watch list. Under operator, I'll click equal, and then under value, because we are looking for a watch list, that was our filter, you'll notice that it has the various watch lists currently illustrated. I'll click on the plus sign, I'll find the ETF core strategy, click on the box, and click OK. I've now created an opportunity to backtest the ETFs in our core satellite watch list. Now for the purposes of our demonstration this evening, I have already created these portfolios. So I'm going to come up here to Backtester and you'll notice that I have created several ETF portfolios. So what I'm going to do for illustration and time's sake is I'm going to click on the first portfolio and go to Edit. 
because this will actually help you learn how to create your own backtest. So I'll come up here to account settings first. And you'll notice our initial investment is $25,000. Our commissions are $20 per trade. That's under our basic function. I'm going to click on advanced. We have a repeat of the same information. I'm not going to use margin. I am not going to account for interest. We will execute buys and sells at the next day's open. And we will execute this test in a daily pricing mode. For our timer, I'm going to use confirm calls as our entry. Under automation rules confirmed up, I click on that and you'll notice under long searches I have the ETF core strategy. However, I'm not quite done there. I'm going to go to our next tab which is stop criteria and I have a number of choices. And in this case I'm going to use a stop as recommendation equals a sell. Now why am I doing this? Well, many times I've heard people discuss that using confirmed ups and confirmed downs gets them into a whipsaw situation and they're not able to get the results that they want. So I'm going to show you several ways in which you can use stop criteria to enhance your return. I'll now go to more settings. We're going to use five positions. We'll automatically replace closed positions. When opening new positions, we'll open five positions immediately. When entering the situation, we'll close any open position. We will invest an average portfolio value. So as our portfolio begins to grow, it will initially go from $5,000 per position to whatever the value is divided by five. Since we're not concerned about selling options at this point, we will use odd lots and we will not purchase a stock that we currently own. Finally, we're not going to buy if the stock violates our stop criteria at purchase and the maximum percent of a stock's average volume will be 10%. Now coming to our automation rules confirm down, I'll click on that and you'll notice I've clicked on the tab that says no action. So as a consequence, that indicates that we'll leave the existing positions open until their respective stop criteria is met and we will not open new positions. Our test period, as I indicated, is going to be the, is December the 19th, 2012 through the 6th of February, 2014. And I'm going to name this ETF core forward slash recommendation equals a cell. At this point, I would click on the tab finish. And now let's look at our result. And remember, this is our ETF core strategy recommendation equals cell. Well, you can see our equity curve is rather powerful. In fact, we dipped below our initial sum just briefly, but you can see we've had a very solid run to the upside. You'll note that in each case that we had a confirm down, we did not go to cash. We just took no action. As a consequence, because of the diversification that we have with the ETFs, we are staying in our portfolio. And up to and including the sixth, we've had a very, very good return. $34,887.90. Well, let's take a little bit closer look at this by going to reports. I'm going to go to summary report, and this gives us a more detailed breakdown of the returns in that particular strategy. We began with $25,000. We grew our account value to $34,444.72. Our annualized rate of return was 34.35. But here's what I really was impressed by only a 7.3% drawdown during that entire period of time. Additionally, we had 11 winners overall. These are total trades. Nine losers, a total of 20. So our percent winners was 55%. Our biggest gainer was up $1,839.35, and our biggest loser was down 553.36. And our total commissions were $700. Scrolling down, I want you to have a look at the diversification that we would have achieved. And I mentioned earlier that were we creating this portfolio, putting more emphasis on the S&P 500 large cap, this might have been a little bit larger and some of these might have been a little bit lower. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we put an equal amount of money in each of those specific ETFs. Now let's go to our second strategy, which was the same strategy except we use VTS less than one. So we changed our stop. Again, you can see the dates. You can see, again, an impressive return, only slightly less than our recommendation equals sell. Our percent gain was 37.41, commission $700, annual rate of return, 33%, and again, a very respectable drawdown of 7.37.
I ran a third back test, ETF core, and this time RT less than 1.0. In other words, if the RT of any particular ETF dropped below 1.0, it would have been sold. Again, you can see a very handsome return. Percent winners, percent gain loss, 37%. Draw down the best of the three so far at 7.19. And again, as you can see, a very, very consistent equity return. Now let's do one more. I'm going to highlight our very first back test. I'm going to click on copy because this is copying the exact parameters that we use to create that back test. However, this time when I get to automation rules, I'm going to go to stop criteria and I'm going to change it to percent gain loss. I'm going to change our percent to 50% and our loss to 8%. Under automation rules down, I'm going to go to cash instead of no action, which means we will close all open positions and we won't open any new positions. Our dates will remain the same. We'll change the labeling to ETF core confirmed up, confirmed down. Our dates are the same and let's click on finish and run. You can see we have that strategy down here. You can see our equity curve growing and you can see during the period of time that we tested the other strategies as well, the 19th of December to the 6th of February, our returns were a little bit more modest to $27,048, percent winners 50%, our percent gain was only 8.19% versus 38.93 for our first one, which was the recommendation equal sell. Our annual rate of return was 7.23, but our drawdown was still a respectable 7.43%. So what we've done is we've looked at four ways in which you can run through quick test, back test, ETF portfolios, and as a consequence, choose a portfolio that is most consistent with your particular trading style. However, before we finish, I want to go to one last step, and that is to show you graphically how these particular ETFs performed against the VVC Australia. So I'm going to click on graphs, click on the down arrow, go to performance graph, I have typed in the VVC AU, and I do that by using this function, clicking on the down arrow, going to stock, and then in this space, type in the appropriate security. So you can see our first entry is the VVC Australia. And you can look at our return, our equity performance, and it looks pretty volatile. Well, let's see how this would have performed against the IJH. You can see the IJH, depicted in the orange, solidly trounced the VVC Australia. Let's remove that. Go to IJR, which is our small cap. Again, outstanding performance versus the VVC. IVV, which is our S&P 500. Great performance. Let's go to VTS, which is our all-world vanguard. Great performance. And finally, the IXJ, which is our global health care. Well, in each case, you can see that each of these ETFs solidly beat the Vectorvest Composite Australia. So let's summarize what we've done this evening. First of all, I hope you can see that by using ETFs, we had very consistent returns. We had relatively low drawdowns. We had a system in place that allowed us to manage and maintain our portfolio by using the various strategies at which we would sell. And we created enormous diversification by using index ETFs because of the multitude of companies and countries that they cover. I hope you found this presentation helpful and I hope you have a great weekend.